on this episode of the round table brought to you by pre extreme and sam extreme. adams extreme uh <laughs> banger of all bangers double banger episode yeah. like if you were taking like a whiskey shot this yeah. would be a double oh yeah, double. yeah. round table <laughs> times taste chasing edges with bp did you say times tits you wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a great episode. Uh, listen, if you're listening to this, don't be afraid to take some notes and write some shit down. Like, you should, you know, put on your fucking, like, <laughs> you, like open your brain up and write some shit down. That's yeah. Nice Straight. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we have Brian Peters back on the episode. We always have Brian on. Every time he's on, it's always a great time. Love having him here. So uh, I think you guys will take away a lot from this episode. Yeah, Brian's been on a nomad journey for a while. World's greatest. And uh, I don't even use the word man. journey ever, but I'm using it because it has been a journey. We learned a lot. We laughed. We cried. We uh, talked Straight. about really smart stuff. Let's go to the show. Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Special guest, Chasing Edges, Brian Peters, the nomad himself is back. Full, yeah, full-blooded gypsy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, dude, it's been... A, You're a, Tommy Shelby. And, and it, yeah, and it's not stopping. It's a, <laughs> Thomas Shelby. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah right? Good hey, one, yeah. same, bro. I yes, love that. Yeah, They're yeah. like, hey, you kind of look like him. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I get my fucking hair back up like yeah, that. Get, Man. get the razor bladed sides. Hell yeah. So great to have you back in the building, Brian. Dude, good to be back, even though it's going to be short lived. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what's interesting is, uh, you know, I don't travel a bunch anymore, but I'm kind of living through you, right? You're around a lot of really cool people. You're getting to do your secondary passion after football. So maybe just kind of give us an insight of what's been going on with you like the last, you know, month or so, so and just like kind of where this whole breathing and lifestyle and driving your sauna all over the world. Like it's yeah. been awesome to watch, man. Yeah. So what he, for those of you listening, he's referring, I have a 16 person mobile sauna and I coach uh, breath work, mental skills. And I use the ice tub and the sauna as part of that bit. And the, the ice is more of like a teacher where I, I coach breath work to down regulate in the ice. But, but besides the point, I just uh, wrapped up a, over 5,700 mile trip with the sauna. I went from Columbus to D Denver, down to Colorado Springs, back to Denver, then out to Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Dallas, South Carolina, and then back here. <laughs> That's even more Shit. than I yeah. thought it was. Damn. Yeah, and it, it was awesome. But like, uh, to, uh, to your extent, like, you know, I think you know the drill where right now I'm just kind of in a grind phase to get what I do out there and in yep. front of the right people. And the more and more people I talk to in military and sports and those kind of things, they're slowly starting to adopt it. But a lot of people just don't understand what it is. Well, and you got to be in front of them, Brian. Like if you're just sitting in your house in Columbus saying, I want to do this, ain't gonna fucking work, bro. Like you being out and taking something like the sauna, which is like uncommon, right? You roll up with yeah. it to JJ Watts house yeah. or Sornex or whatever it is. And like, People are like, fuck, I got to take this guy serious. He's rolling up here with, like, the real deal. I mean, when you leave it here and people realize what it is, they're like, holy shit. So it's like that, one, I know you're passionate about it, but two, when you're getting a chance to, like, arrive like that, motherfuckers got to take it serious, bro. Yeah, and I, I just, uh, I get frustrated because I bang my head against the wall on the phone, like, trying to sell what I do to strength coaches or whoever it ends up being, and then, like, and in, in my world, you have to feel it to understand yes. it. And a lot of times I have to show you the actual adaptation that's happening in the body or you have to feel like, OK, I'm so calm that my mouth is salivating because I'm changing into like a rest and digest, like down regulated state, like things like that, where it's just it's hard to translate. So, yeah. So I'm just kind of like accepting the deal that like I got to get out in front of people, whether that's, again, like twenty one hundred miles away mm -hmm. and and just got to. Uh, I guess pay the deal or pay the debt there but it's dude i i truly do love it just because you see the impact it has on people really quick and then now people like i get so much interaction after i leave places now where it's hey like and it's even like tweaks they're like hey i did this in between reps but like can i get more out of this and it's just like yeah and then so now i'm like constantly coaching uh post events and post like just one-on-one -on -one sessions and stuff where i just it's like i'm constantly in the breath world and the physiology and psychology world. So now like m more like the combative with this travel and stuff is some of it's like keeping up with social, uh, which Cole and Trey helped me with and that kind of stuff too. But, 
um, a lot of it's like I want to stay ahead of the fucking game too. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I got to spend time learning on my like learning and then like kind of like manipulating the information into a story and get reps. And so like the cool thing about all this traveling and hitting different events is I can kind of like insert things and see if they click. And then, or insert like jokes and see if they they hit. It's got almost like stand up. I'm comedy. gonna leave the nice. insert thing alone, but yeah. I was gonna yeah. say, <laughs> but same it's, Danny. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, but it's just it's it's stuff like that. It's just it's all an experiment. So talk about, uh, and then I'll throw it to these guys. Like the relationships, you're really good at building relationships, right? You're good at uh, getting back with people over delivering. Like when you experience the fire and ice. It's like a, it, it is like a team building type of thing on top of it. Like, I don't know if a lot of people realize that. And then you're relaxing people, teaching them stuff. And then I think you're really good at the relationship part. So it seems like probably every spot you stop, then the ongoing relationship or potential business in the future, I would think that you're seeing like some, some good success from that. It's partly passion, partly what they're experiencing, partly which you're really good at too. That's kind of my outsider. Yeah. And it, because like the sauna and ice, like it's a recovery modality, like vasoconstriction dilation, it literally just like flushes you out. And then it does all these other cellular things where I say it makes you harder to kill. It kills weak yeah, cells. I fucking love that by the yeah, way. I just then, tweeted yeah. that yesterday. <laughs> but you, you stack all these little benefits up in, in a very simple thing where it's like, all you gotta do is sit there. Granted, you gotta sit there in the ice and you gotta sit there in the sauna, but it, one, it feels incredible. And then like, I've just I put probably a hundred like just recently I put close to a hundred people through sauna and ice and probably like fourteen hours of coaching at Sornex's Winter Strong event and majority of the people again have been standing on the sidelines they see Rogan talk about the sauna and ice they see whoever do it and or just the ice fat in general that's coming and it's it's again it's not a fat it's a physiological response yep and people don't know how it feels until they feel it. And, but in, the, in that essence, uh, the culture side of it, like, yeah, like people started hitting it multiple times. I, I did it with Ohio State's whole uh, baseball and soccer team, and it becomes like a their recovery tool now. Yeah. And then they're in there seeing who can hold their breath longer in the ice. And, so good. And then they're, and then like some of the football guys and people only go up to their waist. So they see other, the, all these guys end up to their neck. They're like, oh, it kind of gives you a little crazy factor. I mean, you, the 4 a.m. boys know yeah. that deal. So, yeah, it just, um, it's again something you have to experience and then once you and then like because i think my one of my theories is people are super far away from feel now they don't know how oh, yeah they don't know how they feel they they reach for the pill they reach for the the excessive dose of caffeine sometimes yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out. I'm not, uh, for, shout out yeah, pre-extreme yeah, shout out pre -extreme. Yeah. And, and i'm not saying in uh reference to the workout and shout out to pre-extreme for getting me through probably at least <laughs> oh yeah you took while you're and, driving oh dude i took i i did i killed half the bag while i was driving <laughs> yeah, dude that that was my secret weapon That's for awesome. for road trips man. shout geez. out pre -extreme. That's yeah, inspiring. Sh yeah shout out pre-extreme well and i and we'll so, chop that put it on ig <laughs> yeah well, but it's just yeah, and because like I mean, I literally spent over seventy-two hours on the road. Damn, and it's um, it's like hallucinating in the desert. Yeah, <laughs> no, and it's cool. Like that, that's an experiment too. Like I did, I probably spent at least twenty-four plus, maybe forty of those hours silent. The yeah. other, uh, I ripped through two audio books, like Fuck yeah. ripped some pods. Yeah, like all that. I look thing. forward to that shit. Yeah, and it's and it's yeah, dude. That's that's my chance. Like I was, that's my only window to like learn. Mm -hmm. So I I got the books I wanted to and again stole some verbiage here and there and threw it in see if it worked it it worked really well in salt lake city didn't work very well in phoenix you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so and, so all right i was gonna ask because you know on chasing edges pod uh, podcast shout out you always start out asking the guests you know what edges are you chasing what do you learn about so i'll ask you the question let's go what what are the edges like what are you learning about what skills are you trying to develop now yeah so i'm trying to eventually like i'm trying to simplify the connection of physiology to psychology and in order to do that, I need to understand the brain. I need to understand what it's doing. I need to understand memories and I, I need to understand the brain under pressure. And so there's a bunch of really cool books. Um, Dylan Seeley's put me on some dynamite books, um, but understand some of it's like blood flow and neurosynapse, but then like some of it literally is like the suffocation oxygen effect of energy being consumed in the brain and all this stuff. So, um, and some of it's complex, but then, so like, cause I've always simplified it and 
I, you guys have heard the bit before, but like I, I, I use my fist as like the brain, like the, the sp this is your spine, this is your brain stem, it's your lizard brain. It's just reacting to the environment, autonomic nervous system, but it's like, okay, snakes, eat, snakes and lizards eat their young, why? Because they're fucking snakes. Like they don't have the consciousness we have in the middle of the brain is the limbic system. It's like our emotional reaction. It's very mammalian, like territorial, protect our young kind of thing. And then you have the prefrontal cortex, the human gift of why we're the king of the jungle and the rhino and the big animals aren't. It's that realm of communication, problem solving, all those things, decision making. And so uh, wh how I explain it is this wind chime of the lungs and the heart rate that, again, is your physiology. Um, when that gets out of control, blood flow leaves the prefrontal cortex and you become limbic and reactive. The mm. example I usually use is like if you ever argue with your girlfriend or your wife and tell her to calm down, it never fucking works. Yeah. yeah. Why are you crying? Yeah. Quit yeah. crying. Yeah. Li limbic. They're, they're limbic <laughs> in that essence, but it's so much more complicated than that. And I, I kind of I got complacent on that example. And then now I'm learning the true nature of what's what's happening how much of our brain is comprehending what and what scenarios of what influence of the physiology. And it's just, dude, it, I mean, it, I don't even think we truly know everything up to this point, but it's it's been really fun to learn. Has there been anything like learning that that stuck out that kind of like blew your mind or like any cool yeah, things? Pro yeah, probably the coolest thing is that, not, not the coolest thing, but I mean, actually there's more, it's more frustrating than cool in that realm is that basically like 99% of the input we get from our senses and everything is all pre-consciousness. Like, mm. like most of what we actually experience as humans is just lost. It's, or not needed, whatever, whatever it ends up being, it just keeps us standing and moving and breathing and shit like that. Um, so probably the amount that actually becomes conscious thought is super minimal. And so, and then the second thing is the influence of basically like, kind of like your emotional reactions. So, and I hate that like zero to six years old is that important, like how and it gets into attachment theory and these other things where like how we again, like if we were coddled, if we're self soothing, what all these things as a child or if we got lost and had a, like a just weird little traumas in that age that can eventually affect my reactions now. Hmm. And some of the because like what's cool is like um so how your memories are stored in general anyway. So you, like your hippocampus is more like your factual memory, like, like basically like the very, uh, whatever realistic details of that. And then now, and that's not just how your memories are stored. You can't just like look back and okay, this is what happened and why, but no, you have your amygdala actually kind of bookmarks the memory as well with physiological language. So, and I see this in my world show up and the, and part of the reason why I learned this is because I didn't understand what was going on, but I'll get some people in some really fast breathing patterns or like a girl getting the ice and she'll just start sobbing or some of my military guys, mm -hmm. they'll start crying while we're breathing fast. And okay, why is that? And they can't explain it. This is the pre-consciousness part of it. No kidding. And, and, and then now, but now like if you think back to it, the last time they were breathing and re their physiology is in the state when they are static, it was during the trauma, whether it was mm. military or it was a sexual trauma or whatever it ends up being. And so now it's like, okay, like that's programmed into their system and they don't know why, cause that's all happening pre-consciousness. Wow. And so now it's just like, <clears throat> holy shit. Like that's fucking bizarre. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, but it's just like how we respond to certain words. And then yeah. I, I've gone down that recently. I always forget the name of the book, but, um, I think it's like words, words and water. Um, it's a, this Japanese book where the guy's basically like saying, like saying words and like capturing like how the water freezes or something like that. Mm. Um, and you say these kind of hateful words and they show up as like broken fractals. And then now you say these calming, like love, things like that. And the words like the, the crystals freeze beautifully. And so there's different variants of how our body hold on to words and tension are triggered. So it's just never Dude, ending from what you just talked about. We're so far away from that. Yeah. Like not we, but like yeah. in general, like, because when you're saying like people are a, a far away from feel i think you're because they're so removed and so distracted and like that shit you just like most people are like huh like <laughs> like yeah. if they're not looking for it they don't need they're not even, this is like not even close to their conscious thought process no right? we avoid shit <laughs> like yeah and like and masculinity 101 is like, like sure. if you can't control it like you avoid it in and in the world now it's things aren't really life and death like so now most of the stuff we get to choose yeah, whether facts. we pay attention to it, ask questions about it, actually feel it, solve the problem kind of deal. 
And so it gets, I mean, it gets really interesting what you want to pull into your consciousness. And like, I like, again, I try and make everything hit and how I present. And it's just like, okay, you want a meaningful life. Everything's meaningful. I'm a breath work coach. I want every breath to be meaningful. Mm. And like, you can't be conscious of every breath throughout the day, but the more we can pull into consciousness or we can solve subconsciously by getting you to breathe right while you sleep, all these things add up. And then like, particularly, I actually thought of UG when I was learning some of the word stuff, the word affiliation with how our, our physiology reacts to words in that realm. But positive self topic top positive self talk. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> positive. Yeah. Po yep. po positive self, self -talk, talk is so damn important. So like important. we don't understand. Like, it's I'm not even talking like, OK, yeah. Like, yeah, we want to like be our biggest cheerleader. And like, would yeah. you be friends with and the it's not on some corny shit? Yeah. I think people think like this shit is corny. Like, no, no motherfucker. Like I work hard and believe in myself. And I'm going to keep telling myself that like it's not backed up by me just throwing out some affirmation that ain't got none behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I think people get that shit twisted like, no, I'm going to say I believe that it's going to work because I worked for it and I do actually believe it. Like, I don't know. I think that people they hear the self positive talk and they think. You know, you're just sitting around going wishing and, and hoping, and I don't know, like there is yeah. that out there. Though, there is, I think. Like, you could dream it, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, just say, I, just say a, I just say I'm a motherfucking dog, and I'm yeah. gonna out dog my competition. But but that even that too, like <laughs> facts. Uh, facts though, like, yeah. and I think that I really understood, like, there is two. I literally think thought this, like, when I was young. There's two ways to live this thing, because I don't know even know where I got this from, because I wasn't reading and stuff then. But I just remember thinking. In a certain situation, I can look at it this way or that way. This way, I feel like shit. This way, I feel like I have hope. Yeah. And, and, and that's really all faith is. And then when you back that up with actual, like, action, that's why the whole thing I got tattooed on, believe in things, you know, things you can see and touch is no belief at all. But to believe in the unseen is the triumph and the blessing. Because it's like, if you're working and you're believing, that's just a, I just think it's a better way to live. Yeah. I, it's just, I don't know. There's also, like, a stoicism, like, um, mm. um topic that like ryan holiday talks about all the time like all the time in his like articles and like posts and stuff but he always i forget which philosopher it was but it was like every situation has two handles which yeah. one are you gonna choose so like approaching it that way is make changes everything i just been around people that have only looked the other way mm -hmm. and i see how miserable they are and i'm like you know what i'm not fucking repeating that yeah and get it, the fuck out of here but it's lo logical self-reflection will get you there you and, but people don't they avoid it we don't know how we feel and like that's it's uncomfortable what, yeah and that's why I like stoicism i i love journaling in general just because i solve those problems because like okay i'm feeling bad why yeah when's the last time you asked yourself why ask yourself why five fucking times <laughs> yeah. okay why do i feel like this okay why do i think that is and then you'll get you'll solve a lot of your problems by just like stillness and sitting there yeah and so yeah. most people are not by themselves uh long enough to even that question to pop in and, and i'm sure you see this probably with especially with what you do when it is still people aren't used to it they're very uncomfortable yeah i'm i'm looking yeah. for it right and it's like because i know what i got from it all these years of those mornings that are still and when I don't have it, I'm I'm fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Like I need it, and like I'm kind of a dick about it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm yeah. searching for it because I know it's necessary. And I, and I think people get that twisted too, because like it's not meditation. It's not sitting there still, and like like that's a whole different beast. I've probably to... meditated five times in my own yeah, whole but life, that... but what I do is meditative. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. like walking is moving meditation. Like journaling is writing meditation. It depends on how you want to look at it. Weightlifting is a variant as well. Mm -hmm. So just like. I mean, find your meditation, but like you do need to ask yourself fucking questions or you need to find yourself some peace. There you go. Yeah. So uh, what's, uh, yep. am I good? No, yeah, I would, yeah please. Right. I mean, um, you guys are great yes. fucking podcasters. You don't need me to yeah, Danny, please yeah. ask when, when you talk, <laughs> when you talk about like being, everyone's being so far away from feeling shit. Like what's your like one more, one month, like starter kit. Like wh what do you, what's, your, what do you prescribe to people here? So, uh, most of it starts with like cold and breath work just cause like the sauna, the sauna is a great performance enhancing benefit. Like alongside the sauna and ice, I teach them separately too, where like when to use cold. Um, I think cold is kind of in essence, kind of like 4am ish or like making your bed. Like it's something that you don't exactly want it, want to do, but it becomes a, a staple or it becomes a tough thing that you slay the beast early. You slay the little bitch in your head early yeah, and you, and you yeah. go. And then now you get back into field. They're just like, okay, like I, I usually like teach um, the education of the breath, 28 benefits to the nose, one to the mouth, the benefit of the inhale, the benefit of the exhale, like those kind of things. So that like now 
you i try and put the ball in their court and like open up their awareness as fast as possible where like now that you know what's happening and how it's influencing your psychology you can either be a victim of it or you can be in control of it and so now like there's no more excuses like you can't say oh i feel bad no i can breathe myself to feel better i can and this is probably why I'm feeling worse is because my physiology is going in that direction. So I usually get them on a very simple breath practice, like literally like three minutes in the morning, but I teach them the tools to apply throughout the day where it's like, okay, like for you, I don't want to bring work home with me. Okay. I'm going to sit in the car for three minutes and I'm going to slow breathe one to two ratio and for three out for six and for four out for eight, whatever it ends up being. And I'm going to change states. And then like I tangibilize the mask, but besides the point, like I usually start them with cold and start them with breath, just very minimal dose. And if they feel better, like that's the goal. Mm -hmm. But like, as far as like feel goes, like then now I insert the journal and make it tangible because like, uh, I mean, you guys track fucking everything yep. in the gym and like you, you, I mean, you have, probably 20 years of re recording you guys ha like have gone through the whole gauntlet yourselves and like i mean i hear you guys talk conjugate and it's another language to me yeah. so but i think that's really cool in that essence because like i'm a believer that you like you can't manage what you don't measure and so when i get into feel because like i try and tan the same reason i want to know the why of why positive psychology or pi positive self-talk is important mm -hmm. is like i want to be able to like story tell and connect the dots and make it tangible that mm -hmm. Like, hey, this is what's actually happening in your in your physiology when you say negative shit to yourself. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to learn right now. But now you get back to the journal, why it's so important, because it tangibilizes your subjective experience, because it's really hard to determine how you feel every day or remember accurately how you felt last it's week. Impossible. And then now the coolest thing mm -hmm. is and um, like I've heard you guys talk about it, too, like saying like. You, you're keeping your human history mm -hmm. like nobody else can do that for you. No. So but like the coolest thing is like. And what I've found in psychology is how warped our memory is. Extremely. And so now, and if we're just like guessing and checking on how we felt when we did this a month ago or last week or yesterday, like it, like our one, we're handcuffed by our actual vocabulary. So we only can ta like mm -hmm. tag so many words to the memory, but now like the, it, there's proximity rules in memory where the farther you get away from it, the more warped it gets, the, mm -hmm. the inaccuracies go down or go up massively. So it's like, okay, if I write it down and I ask questions and I, like, I, if I answer the same question every day for a year and see all the different fucking responses I get, I'm okay. Like, and then now you start tracking sleep and you start tracking things next to it. Okay. I feel better when I sleep, when I work out, like, that's how you know how you fucking feel. Like mm -hmm. you track your feelings <laughs> and it's, uh, and just because I think feelings are so fleeting too, in that realm of like the emotional uh, roller coaster we all, all ride. I think it only makes logical sense to try and get some control of them. Yeah, that's that's actually something I've started to do within the past like three weeks is like I'm pairing the journaling piece right after I work out. Yeah. So like I'm still, you know, about the, I mean, the runner's high, lunch yeah, high, or whatever. That's so like same way it I makes I a dramatic difference though. And then I've actually, I have always like written shit down, but I've never really revisited it that much. So like now I'm starting to go back and part of it's probably being a dad now. And then like, I want to be able to look back That's cool. at like what happened when, and like, I know definitively, this is what it is. This is what was going on. This is how I felt all that shit. Um, and so, so one thing I liked powerful. about McConaughey's book, mm -hmm. green light is that he said his whole life, right? Dude, he's journaled literally his entire life. Like he went back to like the eighties and said he was going to win a fucking Oscar. Like that's so wet after yeah. his first, <laughs> after his or in the early and after his first role, mm -hmm. like it's just it's unbelievable. And then he spent twelve days just going through them, crying, laughing, you know, remembering. And that's where that book came from. That's why I, I'm, I fuck with the book. It's it's really good because of the reflection he was able because he spent the time, which is kind of why I'm so you know excited about all the content we do because I'm, I'm going to do that in my own because I'm not a great journaler. I'm trying to get better at it, but. I'm, do, I'm good at doing this stuff. So I know that the library that we've all created in this time, COVID was one of the ones that actually kind of like, we were like lock in how we were feeling. Yeah. Now that's going to be really interesting to go back to the daily fires, go back to the podcast during that time, you know, 10 years from now and go, damn, was like that. Fuck. You know what I mean? Dude, well, c going through the transcription, yeah. it's really weird. It was yeah. really weird. Yeah, because you're through going the, through a bunch of them now. Yeah, I'm yeah. still going through them, some of them now, and I'm like, man, this is, this is yeah, like it's pretty wild. feeling. Yeah. Right. You didn't really know. Do you, Trayvon? Yeah, so, like, I think that just, like, mental health and, like, 
emotional health is like something that just not many people talk about that much so like you being a nomad and like you're always traveling and like being busy and everything like what are some of those practices that like you use like every single day even if it only takes like one minute two minutes five minutes or something that you can make sure that you get done every day to you know check off those boxes so you, you know that your mental and emotional are up to par yeah it's, it's the breathing like again like breathing's part of your life it's just weave it weaved into everything whether you want it to be or not and basically like your breath is a mirror for your state and your psychology <laughs> is how i view it so like i mean my met like i i don't have a lot of consistency is like on the road as far as sleep yeah. like all those tough. yeah all those things but um i can always breathe myself into a state where it's like if i'm getting agitated like i feel it coming on and i'll just okay like i've lit like even while driving like i like uh i got in an argument on the phone at one point and i like just pulled over and like slowed it down and then hop back on the road and went but like yeah like the just and if you just look at it in the realm of a, a wind chime like if you can slow it down like nose is down regulatory the exhale is down regulatory spend a lot of time there and go until like i, t I try and tangibilize everything go until your mouth salivates that kind of thing um i you feel better and like in, in the realm of mental health that the, the cool thing i've gotten a bunch of feedback from strength coaches and stuff i've worked with now and then I got a guy at UNC that's given me some guidance too, where I'm actually going to reformat part of what I offer in the realm of like high performance mental health, because that's it's cool. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's one, it's, I'd say that it's a hot topic right now in that For realm. Sure. Same, same as you. That's saying. a good package. Yeah. But, but it's, it's what it is. And like, yeah. and people don't understand that the breath is that powerful to, cause like I, I can get into the, like the hardcore message of like, okay, if I can downregulate faster than you in competition, like, okay, if I save 6% between each snap, it compounds and I have more energy at the end of the game, like True. performance enhancing, I can get you more red blood cells. I can increase CO2 two tolerance, aerobic capacity. Okay. Awesome for performance, but like, what's it doing for your decision-making? And so now is this like slow pace, slower breathing, getting back slower, breathing less than your opponent, all these things compound. But like what it really does is give you mental clarity. Cause like you'll, you'll see it a lot in football where like a guy will be on the field and he has every athletic bone in his body and he knows the X's and O's, but he can't put it together mentally. Why is that? Cause like his physiology is out of control. The, the environment and the moment are bigger than him. And I, and like, that's an extreme example of like, like pro sports or sports in general, but like, we get in those situations every day in life like all the time we get like the moments a little bigger than us or like there's too much going on that you can't find like a centering and that and that's why i think like majority of meditation practices have breath work involved yeah and it's like it's a really easy metric whether you're just following your breath in and out well your brain wanders bring it back and it's like okay how much can i filter there but like really all you're trying to filter is to a better feeling the, bo mind. the box breathing um, that you taught us the first time we did the fire and ice at your place, I've used it multiple times. I think I mentioned last time like that uh, when I get my teeth cleaned, like I have a, a weird response from when I used, got my first tattoo and it almost passed out because I'm, you know, needles like make me all weird. So it was like, you know, I wasn't getting a tattoo. I'm getting but it's the same in my body. Like the one the first I think it was the first time I got my teeth cleaned after I got my tattoo and I, I had passed out multiple times, I had all kinds <laughs> of fucking problems. I've gotten better, but I have to lay down. I can't do it sitting up. Even the last time I've went through multiple tattoo sessions with Jimmy blue. I can't, I tried to sit up and I almost passed out again. So it's like, I have to lay down for some reason. But when I <laughs> went to get my teeth clean, I went white and the lady was like, you good. And I'm like, I'm thinking what the fuck. And then, but I started using some of the box breathing and then it just went away. The other thing I noticed is that, you know, I still have anger issues that pop up from time to time from being a kid. That's part of why I like the the aggressive stuff in the morning. And I'll just like, and I might be mad at a level that I have no be business being that mad for. These guys haven't really seen it here that much, but it's more like it. Maybe Rachel will say something. And I'll be like, fucking, why? I'm thinking like, why am I this mad about this? And I'll just have to take, and I'll literally just go, I got to work up to four. Yeah. Hold for four, work down. And, and she'll be like, <laughs> she literally like, what are you doing? I'm like, just breathing it out. <laughs> and like real quick, because, uh, you know, I know one, oh, I could be upset about this, but then why does it feel like four times the amount? And it's from old shit. I know. I don't even know why it's there and I'm sorting through it, but I, I can cope with it better. And it doesn't even happen that often. But I know like the younger version of me probably would then say something I wouldn't be proud of or not act the way that I think I should be acting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was a guy who punched walls and did all that kind of shit growing up. So it's there. 
but it's like, you know, that does down regulate it. Now I'm able to use that when I'm under the bar still to this day, which is, I think why I'm wired a little different, but the reality is like for life, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been, I've used some of that stuff and, you know, just learned it a couple of years ago or whenever we did that. So, yeah. And it's, but like, and I, I, we already talked about it, but I hear like your intuitive, like basically your pre-consciousness physiology speaking to you. Like you get triggered for these reasons. You don't know why, but, yeah. and that's where like everything you can break down really simply into like stimulus choice response. Yeah. So like whatever the stimulus is, whether it's a, a heavy bar or your wife being pissed at you or whatever it ends up being you have this space between there to make make a conscious choice to get control of yourself and then respond yep. and i don't think people spend a lot of time in that choice realm where it's really because it's i mean it's it's easy to respond to your feelings and emotions for sure but, well it's the most natural thing to do yeah but like <laughs> that's why like i i really want to develop a message to show you that this physiology and this pre-consciousness that's all 99 percent of what's happening out of your control but once it get once that ninety nine percent becomes the one percent, like you can you can stop it, breathe and make a choice. And, and so and I you feel way better. And, and, I, then, and I just think it's empowering. It, yeah. it it has been empowering because like that might happen to me a couple of times a year, but then usually I'm apologizing for a week after of some shit I said or I you know blew up for no reason. I just haven't really had that happen as much. But it's uh it's something around. Uh, I know like when my kids and it makes me feel that way, it's something around that. I feel like they're not appreciating stuff. Mm -hmm. But then once again, when I really think about it is they don't know my life. They only know their life. Mm -hmm. And so you, they can never feel what you felt. It's impossible. Yeah. And so once I start to understand that, but in that moment you go right to this, they're ungrateful, blah, 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 blah. But they're really not. They just don't know my perspective. But if I, when I would breathe through it and this all happens in a short window of time, yeah. but it, it makes me remember that like real quick cause I'm thinking clearly. So, yeah, but I think awareness is such a huge, huge thing in that realm because I don't think people have thought deeply about that concept because yeah. it's, it, cause uh, again, I, I kind of coach it alongside my mental skill, really small mental skills bit in my, in my pitch and that kind of thing. But you start looking at like, like the same as like me and you can't talk on grit or happiness or anything the same because we have all these experiments or experiences that have led us to say in essence that like you view happiness this way like i always use the example from a really cool book called stumbling upon happiness is like okay you have your whole family singing happy birthday around you like on your scale of happiness what is that okay it's 8.1 for you it's a 7.1 for me so like we'll never even talk about birthdays or happiness on the same scale and so yeah. we get triggered by a lot of humans that or a lot of, again, conversation topics or whatever, whatever the words are, um, or just like not us not seeing eye to eye. And why is that? It's because we're all so massively different. And yeah. like, that's why I think everybody should. The important that. scale of certain things are very different for each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that. That's an interesting point. Well, just, You're right. It just demystifies like the human experience where it's like, I like yeah, that word. <laughs> well, just, <laughs> well, that's it, good. Well, well, just like, I mean, cause you, you get this way in relationships, you get this way probably as a parent, you get to like all these things where it's like, you don't, like, you don't understand why he doesn't feel that it's cause he's not you. Yeah. And the more, and that's why I think it prioritizes getting your own shit and thoughts and feelings in line so that an understanding of what the realistic world is and you'll yeah. understand how much is outside of your fucking control. Okay. I'll control my little world. Um, I'll find something that's important and I'll, and I'll pass it along and try and be wise along the way but at the end of the day like you, you're not going to change a lot of humans it kind of goes in hand in hand with another stoicism thing little thing right so i mean somebody cuts you off right but you and me are like fuck that yeah. guy and then you're pissed for like 10 minutes but you're like uh ah, maybe they're actually sick and taking someone to the hospital right now yeah so like meaning just like always giving them the benefit of the doubt and like shifting it that way so like so you're not immediately fucking pissed all the time yeah and that shit's hard to do super Turn, hard. it's like turning the other cheek like somebody yells at you for no reason you're like man they, they're just probably just having a worse day than me exactly yeah you know i mean because it's true you know you don't know what he's dealing with or she's dealing with but yeah. it's like but it is uh, that never used to be my first vibe that's definitely a, a getting older <laughs> thing i'm like well if they had to fuck it or I've had people just straight fucking steal money from me. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm being serious. Like you did that. It was that fucking fucked up. You must need it more than me. Yeah. And that's it. Well, it because just, my life's not going to change tomorrow. You stole that five grand or whatever the fuck it was, whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like, but it's hard to do that though. Yeah. And, and that's why I think it's 
for me, it's a worthy pursuit to teach physiology. Cause like same in the traffic scenario, like why, like, why is that fundamental response already? Like it's kind of like built into our society mm-hmm. in that realm where it's like, okay, like maybe my battery's empty. Like, like rush hour traffic isn't known for being like a kindness problem solving thing. Why? <laughs> no, like, yeah, everybody's been, pissed. Yeah. You've been, again, your battery, you've been like, maybe you've been sleeping shitty. You've already expended your energy at work. You're doing all these things and your physiology is responding accordingly. So like you're probably shallow breathing, you're probably doing and you're reactive. And so you're in that limbic scenario I'm talking about where you're not even solving problems. Cause if you're solving problems, like, cause I've always like tried to like solve traffic in my own head. Like what if everybody just stayed like 30 feet apart and we just all moved at a crab's pace instead of stopping and starting, stopping and starting. <laughs> and, but like, but you see it with the, the dual birds concept where like, nobody's like saying, oh yeah, get over. Like, yeah. oh yeah, we're all like, we're all racing to a red light in essence, but like, let's like get there like a little faster by like cooperating, but no, we're, we're not solving problems or reacting. And so I hate traffic. Yeah. But yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting though, because yeah. like that, like when you're just like driving on the highway, you're like, and then you realize you're going like 15, 20 over and you're like, why am I like, why am I going this fast? Or why am I speeded up before as this guy's coming up next to me? Yeah. Me avoiding traffic is well, one, one of like, my main your breathing life. Quite, yeah. Well, so I had a really cool guest on my podcast, Brian McKenzie. And oh, yeah. hit the way he challenged himself is um, he drove the speed limit. Like can't, <laughs> can't break it. And cause he was like, cause it's kind of in it. Like it's in our DNA to rush and mm. like be anxious and kind of stuff right now. And like, okay, what if I use the car as a vehicle for my piece? And so now like people pass you, people throw you the bird cause you're going the speed <laughs> limit, whatever it ends up being like it's, it's your own pace and he found so much peace there really fast. Like there's a bunch of, resistance. I drive like that fuck most of the time yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. But like, I think, I just think it's a cool little experiment to run where it's like, can I even control my anxiousness? Like, why do I have to get somewhere? If I'm trying to get somewhere, it means I'm not enjoying where I'm at. Mm. And so, okay, Ooh. can I simplify that? And so it's like, where else in my life? Cause like, same as like you guys being parents, I think that whole relationship's so cool. But like, are you thinking about work the next day? Are you thinking about all these things? The same, the car is just a, uh, an illustration of that. No, I want to be where I'm at 10 toes down all in dad, or I want to same as you under the bar. It's the same thing. Can I, how much of my conscious awareness can I bring to that every moment? Mm-hmm. And then, so now, cause you're going to get more out of your life that way. Yeah. So you can have all these goals and anxiousness for the future. But like, again, like a goal is just to show the gap between where you are and where you want to be, but that can't fucking like embody your soul. No. Like, cause you really want to be this multidimensional person throughout the day that uh the whole brian mckenzie thing is interesting because i find myself like i was rushed coming back from somewhere and it it was weird because one i don't even hardly ever drive on the highway anymore i don't go anywhere fast bro (laughs) and i always like made joke of it said like i didn't buy the rolls to ride fast i'm riding slow Mm -hmm. homie like i'm just taking my time (laughs) hey hey, you bought your piece you know you know i'm just chilling there's more than one way to skin it's funny that like but i think as an entrepreneur especially you do feel like because you're wearing a lot of hats you're rushing stuff and one of my i guess in this act i'll say because i've had multiple acts in this act uh that was kind of like my thing i just didn't want to be that way i want to execute i want to be long term i want to enjoy what i got going on and i'm trying not to be that way but so it spilled over to a lot of that stuff for sure but i definitely wasn't always that way (laughs) yeah it just it just falls out of your vision sometimes where it gets really easy to have 10 things on your plate and go at all of them. And I'm, I, I constantly uh, deal with that devil myself where it's yeah. just like, uh, there's a lot of things I want to do and some things fall at the wayside. But like at the end of the day, if I'm present in whatever it is I am doing, I'm sure those balls will go, or those rocks will go up the hill kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I got two thoughts. Yeah. Actually, I, I got, tell, I got, I got one thought and on one everything. tactic. Oh, so I would say all of us are generally more self-aware than 99% of the population. We actually like think about Let's shit. Go. You know what I mean? I would say it's probably, but I think and, and po- what podcasting me, is such a cool met- yeah. metric. for yeah, that. And yeah. What made me think about this was back to the self-talk stuff is if you, if someone can't like, like they don't have that natural instinct of like they think they're a dog, which they should. Like everyone has it. Everyone's Speaking got some dog in them. Speak it inside. But of I them. think that's why it's important for like us to be like the example 
of showing people how to basically be a dog. Yeah, like I to it. like to develop I'm following that Nicole. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was one preaching thought. to the choir. I, I think we do a good job, <laughs> and I think people listening, you're probably if you're listening to this, you're probably also more self aware than 99 percent of the population. You're, you're at least searching so, for it. Yeah. yeah. So like, be that example. Two, so back to journaling. You know, obviously you're a huge inspiration for journaling, something I've been trying to work on. Got a little notion set up. And one thing I've found that actually works for me is whenever I'm driving and listening to personal development, like podcasts, yeah. most of the time if it's an interview podcast, I won't take notes about it okay. or anything like that. But if it's a book or whatever, you know, that's because that's what you're supposed to do. Like I'll do that. Okay. So on podcast now, if I'm listening to something, I automatically am r- like taking quotes. Like I'm constantly re-listening to things. And if I get through it and I don't think it's a good interview, I'll stop. I'm trying to be more selective of what I'm taking in or whatever. Like and also, so I'm taking down quotes and then I'm taking down like what they're talking about and actually taking their like tactics or whatever. And then I'm asking myself, what questions would I ask? Like, what would I do? Or, like, mm. what's the, you know, what's the overarching thing? What did I like? What did I not like? And that's, like, my sense of journaling because I'm taking down, like, when I'm listening to it. So, I, most of the time, I know what's going on. So, it's been really interesting going back, like, even, like, a few months ago, like, in seeing what was going on mm. then. Like, it almost takes me back to when I was listening to it. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. So. Cool. I like that a lot. Well, I just think, I mean, like, asking questions is such a powerful yeah. tool. And it it is like a muscle you got to flex to like ask the right question or get the right information out of the person. Like that's why I think we're we're kind of talking about like creating like MySpace profiles again for people uh, <laughs> before the podcast where it's like okay like what if I could just click a link and see again some of your podcast highlights, your thoughts, philosophies, your bio, your music you're listening to, like kind of like just a, a uh, bod. yeah, but just a collaboration of you in that realm so i know what questions to ask or know like what you're capable of because like the cool thing like you'll end up finding out shit you didn't know about people on podcasts anyways but if you can just like filter that and get there a little faster that's why i i, I like h- half the time i listen to podcasts now too I, I play that same game like ooh, that's a good question or like ooh, could we have asked that better or like mm-hmm. it's and so now it just becomes a, a talent almost my myspace profile i think is on that wall over there <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what dope. that's what it yeah. is a big mix of Trayvon, you got something else, brother? Um, no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It was good. Uh, Brian, you yeah. want to roll to your... Yeah, uh, I need to grab my computer real quick, right, though. you got it. We'll, we'll yeah. talk amongst We're ourselves. Next should, we do a, should we do a uh, ad for yeah, the free extreme? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's run it back. All, All right. right. Three, two, one. Ad time. Okay. Are we, are we live, Kyle? Yeah, go ahead. All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> the Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle and Sam Adams Beer. But today, we're going to highlight the new... Free extreme for maximum muscle, Mr. Gregory. If you want the craziest pumps in your entire life with 500 megs of caffeine that will get you rocking, yep. you gotta go pre extreme. 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 Yeah. extreme. extreme. Listen, this is unbelievable. unbelievable. It's sold out in two weeks. Sold out. It's gonna be back in another two weeks. Be you better make sure and buy at least three bags of pre extreme. So wet. So I need the gremlin one. Extreme. There you go. (laughs) Maxovermuscle.com. All right. Back to the show. (laughs) Dude, the gremlin one's my favorite. I do like Danny because he's going Dante Hall. I I, I did did, did a little Brutus on that one. I was like. (laughs) Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Dude, the Brutus uh, headbang is probably one of the all-time greatest mascots. Yeah, it's really good. We did that that, that bit the first time. I I watched it like 10 times. I laughed. That was so good. Hilarious. Yeah. Is good. Yeah, but that, good was, job. that was a smooth transition. Yeah, I don't think job. Kyle has to cut that. I think no, no, no. Like, we just rolled that to that great. one, baby. Boom, boom, boom. All right, now uh, time for chasing edges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seamless transition into yeah. Fire Away Friday. Um, you, I don't know if you guys have checked it out, but uh, asking four to five questions, kind of some of it's esoteric, but just fun questions because as we talked about the entire podcast today, basically your brain gets rid of what. Uh, doesn't keep it alive and what you ask questions about why journaling and self-awareness all those things are really big but it's just a little more juicy fun way to do it but how i I got a list of 120 questions damn each one of the boys is going to pick a number today and we're going to okay i wonder what cole's picking Uh, no (laughs) (laughs) i I don't know (laughs) you're going to pick it probably yeah yeah uh gee what's up i'll pick six six oh (laughs) i see how we're doing this i see it Ooh. What phenomenon or event, uh, or, sorry, what phenomenon or event do you hope you'll be alive for in the future? Phenomenon or event I hope I'll be alive for in the future. 
You know, it's w- weird that uh, just hit me was uh, some. <laughs> <laughs> that good. Yeah, this is pretty good. Uh, well, two things. Uh, one would be something Mars related. I don't know uh, why that's that's what what I, I, that, 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 that just that's that's that popped in my head. I'm not really sure. It's not yeah. like I got a telescope in my bedroom or something. You know, I mean, like, yeah, but <laughs> something Mars related. And I saw this the other day, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but they're trying to bring back a dinosaur. Like, oh, yeah, like actually like because so I want shout out archaeology. I thought I, <laughs> listen, nice. listen, listen, I thought I was going to be an archaeologist before we lived. Yeah. Hey, like, this is interesting. I, I thought, swear okay. to you. I, I, asked, I asked my mom. She yeah. I used to. She's like, you're going to go live in a tent is somewhere and dust off fucking like bone. Like I what, literally what, thought, where did this come from? Uh, I think it's because in the valley in Ohio, there's a lot of dinosaur oh. type of stuff going on. Right. And I don't know where it came from, but I originally thought, because I like history. I like, like, Native American history, too. I was always looking for arrowheads when I was a kid. Like, that whole kind of thing was always, like, really interesting to me. So I think that that's where that comes from. I thought Corey G was going to be an archaeologist. So I I pose a question. This is just my thought, because I went to Kosai after dark or whatever (laughs) with Michaela the other night. Okay. And there was dinosaur shit going on, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, there's no fucking way that this thing was real and dragons weren't. I 100 yeah. percent, I 100 percent believe that dragons that at some point were real because like they dinosaurs that had evolved somewhere. I think absolutely there's a yeah. Well, was I like mean, Komodo dragons, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it's too yeah. close. So I think that some for some reason the dinosaur stuff, especially when I was younger, was so interesting. I think it was also just putting yourself thinking that, and then when Jurassic Park came out where we coexist like holy so shit epic. which didn't ever work out well in Jurassic Park Shout out. but I saw something <laughs> that was on Instagram that said that you know basically like real life Jurassic Park they were trying to like bring back some type of dinosaur so that's so could I actually go to a zoo and see a dinosaur in my lifetime potentially I mean that what they're pulling the DNA and they're trying Correct. to grow it right yeah yep. so like that, some embryo or like wild. some uh, yeah, chicken egg or so. Uh, so I think <laughs> yeah. I don't know if us being on Mars or having bringing dinosaurs back should happen, but those are two things that immediately pop in my head for no apparent reason. Yeah, well, it never, it never works out when dinosaurs come around. I know, no, like I've good. watched every Jurassic. Are Park. we all yeah. answered? Yeah, yeah, everybody's answered. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. 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 Well, Smalls. that that's actually like similar to what I say, but the the other thing that came to mind is uh, being in some like Ready Player One shit. Mm. Some like alternate. What's that mean? So like basically you have like a like a VR like headset oh, okay. so you go into like metaverse yeah like but it's like the full Oasis. haptic like, like you porn? like straight up are doing that I mean probably it's your thing it's your thing it's definitely I mean yeah. Sea Lover probably yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Tyler have, have you have you ever been like have you ever put on the VR shit no have you Trey Oculus yeah and it has an Oculus it's cool dude I really want to try one out oh you've never done I, it no I've never done it but I've also seen uh Danny I'll I'll be the first to tell you that it's it's coming sooner than you think <laughs> what's that uh like so I, I I've already well, <laughs> that's what she, not, yeah what are you talking about here well, no, no but no, no but uh, so anyways this is gonna go left and right field this okay, okay. Perfect, perfect. 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 out of control response Woo! so one so and and I don't know if you read the book Dopamine Nation yet really cool book on like understanding where dopamine comes from oh, and how the, the problem of our, our society a little bit right now um dopamine. yeah dopamine nation by anna lemke great book okay. um part of like basically she goes the book goes into talking about like basically we have a lot to learn from addicts so if we can learn from the like the farthest stretching addicts mm. like we can learn how to basically cope with these dopamine addictions that we do have with the phone and food and things like that the book is like the one of the main characters in the book she, she story tells beautifully is this guy that's addicted to uh sex porn kind of concept he goes to the extreme of creating like back in the day he created like a basically like a masturbation machine with a string tied to a record player that would pull on his junk um <laughs> Gee, wow but so but, but <laughs> that's but, innovative wow. right there i'm, I'm not hey, done hold on, hold on. i'm not done i'm not <laughs> done technology rules every no. time i see a record player oh, that's what i think of now <laughs> So, but, <laughs> you know, how the physics work? But, <laughs> that's so fucked up. Oh, no, but so, so so it accelerates into the world. So he creates an electrical stim machine uh, that he can control, and then eventually they start tying it to videos where it like it mimics like what's happening in the video, those things, and then it, he gets too addicted to where he starts giving the controls to strangers online. It goes down Damn. the whole thing. But besides, the point, 
<laughs> but so we'll make the hard cut there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to give that little nuance. So there I, hey, hey, all right. So when I had a record no, player when I was little, they had the forty-five or the ninety. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you can speed it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right, go ahead. Um, oh, shit, now I, I lost my Sorry, Brian. Oh, all right, hold on. Was that left or right? Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that was left field. Yeah. That was left field. Uh, hold on. What was, the, what was your response? <laughs> the, like ready some ready Danny one. was ready thinking about one. how to put his oh, okay, on a record so, Okay, right. then Ready Player One. So I put, I put on this suit the other day. Um, it's a two-way biofeedback suit, so they can get uh, your metri- biometrics off you, but also they can initial sh- initiate shocks. Mm-hmm. So I put on this suit where, and, and eventually it's going to be just like an Under Armour suit, like that thin. Um, and so he was having the machine shock me, and it had four different settings. It was like punch, uh, gunshot, shotgun, and stab. And that shit hurt like a motherfucker. And Damn! It's, but so yeah, and, that's fucking and, and, weird. And, and, it, and it runs. Have you, I don't know if you guys have ever seen catapult with the, the little pellets that uh, used to track guys like saying. top velocity in games and things like that. It runs on those same pellets and for like eight hours. So that's going to be the Ready Player One thing. Damn. Yeah, I was going to say that's I, I saw where they because uh, uh, there's like some dude I follow who's like he only plays VR games and shit like that. It looks super cool, but uh, he was wearing like a suit, like he was testing yeah, out like a suit or yeah, basically like a full body body thing. Yeah, so, so they're they're using this suit for military training where like if you get uh. shot. You're gonna stay contracted here and have to still shoot with that pain. So you learn how to deal. Yeah, with it. or they have electronic grenades where it blows up, and like if you really were in proximity to where your leg's gone, like your leg's locked, and it's just it's gonna be really cool in the future. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's bananas. Um, it is bananas. But cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> phenomenon event you think you want to uh, want to be alive for in the future? So my, what I really want to be alive for is I'm trying to set the Guinness World Record for the world's greatest uncle. So, so, you, so you want to be alive currently, for receiving that award? Yes, okay. because currently, right now, at the age of 25, I am a great uncle. I have two little great nephews, Carters and Miles, just born, and I'm on the trajectory where, you know, I could end up being like a four-time great uncle, which I'm going to say I might be the world's so greatest. So not just a great uncle, good person, meaning great, great, the, great, great yeah, uncle. Yeah. Like four lineages of, you know that going on so i'm trying to be the world's greatest uncle hell yeah so uh, so all i need is basically like one of them to get like a girl pregnant at like 16 or 18 <laughs> and I'm, set. I'm set you know just a few so holes. Yeah. Yeah. just saying <laughs> just saying is, have you done any research to see how many levels it's happened because four is like i've never heard of like I mean, it's probably a pretty high bar back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Well, and from the high valley, who knows? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, either way, I just want to see if I can make it to four. Like, I have four, like, great, 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 great nephew. Then I'm like, I would, cons- I'll just write the record myself. That's pretty sick. There we know? go. So we'll, make, we'll make an award for you. <laughs> so that's that's what I hope. I that's a unique one. You got an archaeologist, uh, VR porn, and <laughs> <laughs> porn, and the great uncle Trey. What do you got? <laughs> um, so I would say like the like ma- like the mass like global like awareness or recognition of like like aliens. Yeah. So like where like. So, like, I already believe in, like, aliens. Yep. So, so, like, but, like, the mass recognition where, like, everybody believes in aliens. Like, because here's like, an alien. Because, like, aliens, like, came and visited or something. So, like, everyone's yeah. just stuck on it. Or, like, everyone knows. Not, or, like, where everybody's bought into the conspiracy theory of yeah. UFOs or it's, something. It's not a conspiracy anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's just facts. Exactly. That's what, yeah. That'd be cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the that, U, like the UFOs in like Arizona, like where yeah. that's like not like a conspiracy anymore. Like that just happened. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I yeah. also believe in that, so I, yeah. I, I want that to happen. It'd as be well. cool if somebody could like interview an alien. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they like roll down and they're like, all right, roll down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that, that could happen, Trey, though. do you think that they're out there just basically like watching us, like just seeing like you know what? I mean, I like I could go down. Like I got, I got like some conspiracies, but like I think like aliens are like something that like already like live among us. Mm-hmm. Kind of how in, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like Men, like like men in Black, people. too? Like Men in Black, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had to get that idea from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so mine's kind of a little dark. Okay. Uh, well, I just I think it'd be really cool to live in a time of a world war. Oh, wow. That uh, is kind of dark. It's kind of it's kind of dark. <laughs> I don't want a lot of people to die in that essence. But, like, just look. Like, I, I love history and stoicism and, obviously, like, the Greeks and the Spartans, that whole realm. And really like World War II history. So, like, yeah. I would just 
like to see the dynamic of the planet one with this amount of social media exposure where like you mm. can capture a lot like what's going to be captured in war and like will that increase the understanding of humans of like the actual trauma and craziness of of war because now i think it, we're pretty uh distant from it like i don't yeah. think a, a bunch of it's been documented obviously we have the gory movies and those kind of things but i think when it becomes like person to person like and you're trying to communicate with your people in a world war and i i just i would think of the just the case study or like the experiment and like seeing how everything is like i, I don't want it to happen but i do think it'd be really cool to just kind of see how the world reacts to that now yeah if you think about and i also like world war ii history too especially because my granddad was a world war ii vet like if that was documented how it would be documented now yeah it would be It'd scary be and i i think that it I think even like when you see the stuff from Syria and the stuff like of the dictators, what they do, it's document like people are able to really know what's going on. Yeah. And, and I and I and think it, and it gets them help and that kind yeah, of thing I too think so. in yeah. that extent. But I, 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 I've also read some theories where just because we have nuclear weapons now that it's highly unlikely that we actually go to like a, get yeah. into another World War state. But anyways, uh, Danny, pick a number. Trace three, three. You didn't follow up with nine. Yeah. Are you serious, he Danny? Missed, he missed that. Here we go. Oh, a, are you this, serious? I left it for you. This is a great question, oh my gosh. And, and we'll keep it going counterclockwise. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what do you wish you spent more time doing five years ago? I mean, the first thing I think of is just, like, cultivating my skill set sooner. Um, I feel like in the past, like, six to 12 months, I've really hit a stride with, like, email marketing and, like, copywriting and shit like that. So – that's pretty much like a kind of a dull answer, but that's pretty much what I would dull. say. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be in the same category where I wish I would have, like, right when I grasped onto the breath work, I wish I would have gone all physiology really quick. Like, even taking college physiology courses and stuff again, just so I had this root understanding before I had to, like, go on Coursera and, like, in my free time kind of see it. But yeah, because yeah. the other thing, like, when we did the six life questions on G's, uh, G's app or whatever was, like, it was something similar to that. Like one thing you could change or something yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> mine was uh, not finishing college because there was a pivotal point between my junior and senior year when Corey offered me a job at Muscle Farm and he had like a, like 13 cities to choose from. And I said no because I wanted to finish my senior yeah. year or I wanted to do my senior year, which looking back now, I wouldn't have done that. So it would be either that or <laughs> just not going to a fucking private school. You know yeah. what I mean? So. No, I like that. You going to Cole or me? Cole. Well, this is this is kind of tough because five years ago I was only 20. So I was in the age of, like, just trying to figure shit out. So I was, like, developing my skills. Like, there wasn't, like, I was just, like, trying to learn and absorb everything. So I don't know if, like, there's anything particular, I guess. Like, maybe, maybe like, trying to keep up with, like, friends and, like, family more, nice. you know, at that age. Because that's whenever basically it was a time where everyone was separated and, like, doing their own thing. So – yeah, boom. Yeah. Um, I would say like invest more money. Yeah, I was about to say Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Invest yeah. more. What's the actual question again? Brian? Um, uh, what do you wish you spent more time doing five years ago? <clears throat> it's interesting because I would say, f what? How long Max Efforts in sixteen was it seven years? Yeah. So when I shifted from MP to starting this business and really the app. I did spend more time doing what I should have been doing previously, right? Because once again, I always kind of look at my life's in these chopped up like seven or 10 year blocks. And <clears throat> the block before it was so busy that there's definitely family was not a priority. Nor was like, I guess, my way of operating or really dedicating to exactly how I want to operate. Seven years ago, I said, this next act, this next version of Corey is going to do and get to what you're sitting in right now, right? Is it's going to be, you know, all in a certain area. I literally could see exactly. How, so I was doubling down exactly how I would see myself <clears throat> operate with family, with work, content. And then this was the pinnacle of that, which was all under one roof, 10 minutes from my house, uh, once again, like even all the way down, I joke about the car, but like, you know, just not really in a rush, but I'm, but I love coming to a spot where we're doing things that I think are impactful 
and it's in the area I've always wanted to live in. Like it's all these things that I was like, all right, I did this stuff for this first, we'll call it whatever, 17 years or however long it was in five to seven years ago. I said, now I'm going to do this because it's more about lifestyle. <clears throat> I believe in my skill set. I believe I'm going to make money to, you know, feed my family, but I had to really double down on lifestyle because I'm glad the other one kind of ended when it did, because that's the age of my kids too, mm -hmm. where this next group of time, I had more time for them. So I'm, I'm glad I did that when I did it. Um, they were younger and I'm glad that I did this at that period of time. So I don't know that, um, I would do anything that much different. You can always say invest more money or do this, but I I, I shifted uh, very in an aware way because of what was going on previously. So I probably wouldn't change that much, to be honest. Hell yeah, yeah. Coke number. Um, <laughs> go on. Well, uh, you know, you, I want to take the number. You go know, on. you know, I yeah, want to. You're but you want personal, so I'm I'm balancing. I'm gonna go a personal route. <laughs> Uh, I'll, leave, I'll, 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 I'll leave the alley oop. <laughs> I'm gonna shit. go 50. Uh, <laughs> is that your football number? Yeah, I had it since third grade. Okay. Shout out AJ Hawk. <laughs> yeah, shout out AJ. Ball. From third grade all the way to high school. There you go. Yep, dog. <laughs> um, is there a difference between deserve and earn, and do we truly deserve anything? Um, me personally, I don't think that you deserve anything. Like, fuck, if I deserve everything in Belzo, like, I probably would have had, like, you would have had a lot of stuff. But <laughs> yeah. my entire life is, like, you basically had to earn and, like, go get it. So, that's my answer. Yeah, I feel like that would probably be reflected across the board, hey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead, Trimble. Yeah. Um, I think, though, like, everyone, like, deserves, though, like, some form of happiness, though, to be honest. Like, some form of, like, happiness or, like, someone or, like, someone that everybody, like, deserves, like, someone that cares for them or like something like that. So like, I do think that there is like some things like that people like should just receive in life. Yeah. And like, you know, like love and happiness. Like, I think that's something that everybody should receive in life, no matter who you are. Like, I think that would, I think that would be like ignorant to think that someone doesn't deserve that because why, why did they not deserve that's that? That's an amazing answer. And because I think when people think, <coughs> deserve they automatically think of like material items it doesn't have to be a material item it can be emotional or correct mental. which is a great that's point a great fucking yeah. point right it, yeah and, I, banger. and yeah and i get into like the the kind of the primal side of that where like everybody like you don't deserve a tribe <laughs> yeah. in that realm like but like you are usually because you're born and in, born into the physical world in general um I, I think that's cool when you start again breaking down like the emotional support because like it's built into nature mm. to not deserve a family and a tribe and the breath that you have and those kind of things and like I, I think that I the initial triggering I got from this is entitlement because yeah. like that's mm -hmm. a, a big pro I think a big problem today where like yeah I think people need to be less entitled and earn more of their shit and I like that's not like a bold statement like I think I think like talking to all these strength coaches it shows up in the kids and that kind of yeah. thing but um I do think whether you like going into that same il like illustration example that when this the student or somebody steps into the locker room and those kind of things <coughs> they do deserve the full support of the tribe until they don't earn it in essence or they compromise I it. don't think um it's a bold statement but I think they're both true right I think that what Trey says is extremely true because I've thought that about people before that have like you could just tell man they just haven't had a lot of things go their way and maybe they don't have good self-talk and maybe they don't maybe they have drama in their life maybe but you can just tell like they just deserve to be loved like to your point Trey. Right? like they, everyone should experience that support I think that's true we're not guaranteed it because we all have parent issues and all that stuff right everyone goes through something but I think that on top of it though I you know, I've always thought I didn't deserve it, which probably maybe to a fault, which is why I work so hard. And Rachel's brought that up to me. She's like, you just don't really know how to relax, do you? And I'm like, well, no, because I never want it to go away. Like, so my thing is, is I'm, I'm pushing so it just stays the same or gets better because I'd never want to go back there. That's a different type of sickness, but I'd rather be on this side of it thinking like, I got to keep putting work in. I, if I want to earn whatever's next or do whatever's next like I have to put the time in to receive that alley-oop because look what did uh, Gary play say the the harder you work the luckier you get you know I do believe that you're gonna get I'm getting a fucking nerf alley-oop right now with some exposure but do I think it's unwarranted no I think do I think I deserve it 
I don't know if that's the word I would use, but I think like I put in the work. So when it comes, I'm not that surprised. But you're using the, I guess that concept of not deserving it to earn it. You yeah, know? exactly. They kind of playing off each other. So, but I've always thought that way. Like, I think because nothing really came easy, whether it was athletics, whether it was um, just like in life in general, I think that that, you know, kind of set the tone for me from that, for just how I grew up. Like, okay, there's obviously people that have a lot better situation. I need to work so I can get a better situation. No one's going to just give it to me because I don't deserve it. I mean, I don't know. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the first thing that came to mind, because like, I feel like I've just, I don't really know why, but like by default, I always feel like I'm not, like I, like I don't deserve like the, the nice item or whether it's a material item or, or whatever. So like I always feel like I have to work really, really hard to justify it. So this is something that we talked about at a certain time in my career. It's like he always says like earned not given. So yeah. like that that's what plays in my mind when I'm when I'm thinking about I say this. that to all these guys all the time. Yeah. And that's why like over delivery and going above and beyond and anticipating all, all kinds of like uh you know, things that need to be solved. That's why that's constantly at the forefront of my mind. It's gotten better over time, but it is still something that I'm always probably going to wrestle I've had with. the same conversation with everybody in this place when they do something good and I'm trying to praise them for it or there's some type of monetary thing. They'll be like, thank you, G, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, I wouldn't be – you earned it. I wouldn't give this to you. Mm. It's just the truth. Like, we're all in this together to be fucking badasses, right? But we all have to play the part. So then when that result comes – you know, I appreciate the thanks, but I'm not surprised because I know what we did to get here. And if you didn't do what you did, you wouldn't be getting it. So it's like I try to remind everybody that I didn't give you a layup. You gave yourself a layup. Yeah. I'm just rewarding you because that's my spot in this whole ecosystem because I'm the main dude or whatever. But the reality is, like, you earned it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying There's to a lot of people that had to spot. It didn't hurt it. No, I, do, I <laughs> do think on the flip side, there's a lot of people who have always gotten stuff given to them that yeah. have struggled to earn something. Like uh, recently, especially now since I'm out of school, like a few years removed, there's people who say, oh, I went to college. I got this for a degree. There's no way this person who didn't go to college should be making more money than me. Mm. And like that's an being in kind of like both the worlds like that, like that's an issue. Like, I, yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, what's the saying where you, you start on third base and think you hit a triple? <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, it, there is advantages. But, like, to try and summarize this question, because I think Trey really actually hit it on the head in that realm, there's environments where, like, the deserve earn things different. Like, yeah. I think in business, like, you got to earn everything and you should over deliver constantly. Same in sports to some extent like because so much is out of control what team you're on like players moving like those kind of things but i do think everybody deserves this like tribe or like in like family or what he was i think referencing was like family care and support where like i do think everybody deserves that because i and sometimes who you're born to is out of your control and like that's i mean that there's so many socio uh like whatever sociology influences there but i do think there, there's a cool split there where like yeah, like f human nature. Yeah, you should be loved and supported in that realm. And then after that, like, let's go like that. If that's mm -hmm. the foundation, I think everybody be a lot better at earning stuff, too. You know, yeah. but just playing off each other. Trade number. You gonna take it? Mm, no, I tried to lay. Right. I tried yeah. to lay. No, it right. Up. Right. no what we should do is it, finish trades, and end, then we'll the do end. sixty-nine. It's the episodes. The people listening, <laughs> yeah. someone saying sixty-nine, so it's theirs. Yeah. It's theirs. Trade, We're do what's on your heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. We'll go with 23. 23. Ooh. Um. I can't believe nobody picked 69. <laughs> I'm the most degenerate about the 69. I picked six. Yeah. I try to give you a layup, Danny. Yeah. Well, Daddy yeah. got to go Babe Ruth. Bro. I know. I got it. Yeah. Uh, I think we already did this one, but I'll, do, I'll just go right above it. Um, what's one thing you have not done that you really want to do? Very simple question. Hmm. Hmm. I want to Gosh, so many like gen genuinely just want to travel more. Um, kind of like want to like climb like a mountain. Like let's go. Cole, Fuck yeah. Like I was like I remember like one group chat I was talking with Cole. Like I think like climbing like Mount Everest I think or something like that would be like super cool. Yeah. Like because like that's like one where like you either do it or you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out North Face. So like, sponsor Trey. Yeah. 
So like I think like <laughs> yeah. I think like doing something like of that vein would be super super like, like that crazy. That crazy. Yeah. I think I would be interested in doing something like that where it's like you do it or like or you like, die. Yeah, yeah, or like something bad happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like you lose a leg. You gotta yeah. Just put chaos. the chips in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just like uh, that's why uh, I know you've read the Comfort Crisis, right, Danny? I don't know if you guys yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. That that Masoji concept, where like obviously rule number one is don't die, but it needs to yeah. be, it needs to be fifty fifty whether or not yeah. you can complete it or not. And I think that's a really cool because like I, I think all you guys embody it, but G, you've articulated it to me before, where it's like you got to go, like you got to put the go under the lights, you got to go into the arena, you got to get under the fucking bar. I'm I'm addicted to that. Uh, how I respond, and but like, I don't know why, but it's it's been like that my whole life. Yeah, and I, it's a, it's an incredible attribute in that sense where it's like same as doing like a crazy thing. Like people need to get into that mindset. Yeah. And uh, Michael Easter's next book is actually called Scarcity Mindset, which would be super Fuck fun. And that, that er, but like that's what that is. It's like, like can I find what it is I need in order to like slay the fucking beast mm-hmm. today? And so, anyways, I just I think you got the uh, what was the exact question again? I'm sorry. Oh uh, shit. Uh, we I talked about so much good stuff. Like uh, a, it was something it was I want to do. What, just yeah, one thing. Oh, you, you I, I need to, to see the pyramids. Back mm-hmm. to, back to my archaeology, uh, yeah. you know, skill set. Yeah, I'm a big pyramids guy too. That's so I, I just <laughs> think that it's an alienish uh, monument that obviously we've been trying to explain away forever. We can't. And it's that going to Egypt has not been the easiest thing in my lifetime because of just like the unrest or things that are going on in the world. And I just saw like the guys on the pivot went there the other day. And every time I see somebody go to Egypt, I'm super jealous. Rachel will will go for sure. She's like, well, I want to wait till the kids are grown. And just like when we do our travels, like I have to see the pyramids in person in my lifetime. And there's another thing. And I think it's in Jordan. That was where they did an Indiana Jones. It's like, Mm. Built, this, in, built into the rock. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking um, unbelievable. I think it's in Jordan. Yeah. So I just think like, and I grew up Catholic, but it's not necessarily because of that. But like, I think seeing the quote unquote holy area would be unbelievable. Just all of that whole part of the world, which has been really off limits my entire life, if you really think about it. Mm-hmm. So I think experiencing that part of the world is really important to me at some point in my life. Yeah, so. I think that's pretty cool. I I also think they were pretty in tune with feet. Granted, like they didn't have technology and stuff back then. Yeah. But like the Great Pyramids, they don't have tombs or anything in them. Like uh, there's some theories with how like the water structures are built underneath there that it basically like amplified your frequency around it. Mm. Where you can see it now, even now, even though they're not functioning properly. But like when you try and take pictures around there, there's like um, glowing dots because like the air is kind of supercharged. But like people used to kind of uh, supposedly theor- theoretically go there to feel good. Yeah, I, be- it, I mean, and they Nic- got some figured out. Well, this this well, thing's weigh like two thousand pounds and are <laughs> stacked on top of each well, other. Well, Nikola Tesla tried to uh, pull from their technology to. He initially like had a whole different energy source. Mm. Um, anyways, he got beat out by some other stuff. But go ahead. He's a, he's an interesting guy. Like yeah. I, obviously, I know why Elon named it what he did because Tesla like doesn't get the credit. He was a really really smart guy. Oh uh, yeah, uh, that's that's somebody I want to learn more. History yeah, same. About. I agree. Um, for me, aside from like the usual like I want to go to Europe thing, which that is a thing I guess, but it would be probably like uh, more challenge related. So like. Um, always wanted to go to like Africa, Africa or South America. So like talking like Amazon or like some crazy shit in Africa. I don't even fucking yeah. know. Nile like, River. I, well, like I've always wanted to go like shark cage diving in South South Africa. That would really? be like absolutely Hell yeah. amazing. Yeah. Like because like I was in. I went in, I went uh, shark cage diving in Hawaii, but like it's not a fucking great white. You know yeah. what I mean? I want to see like some shit go down. You know what All I mean? All right, oh, Danny. Dude. Yeah, I want to. I want to. Fr- yeah, I want to free good. swim with the great whites. Free swim. Yeah. Um. Because Brian McKenzie. Yeah, Brian McKenzie and the, those guys did it for uh, I think Huberman's uh, oh, okay. VR for like fear, um, kind of deal. And uh, he so because we podcast him way back in the day with mind shrunk stuff, but he uh, we are asking like, how do you prepare for that? And he yeah. goes, he goes, well, if you get in the water, if like you act like prey, they'll treat you like prey. You get in, act like a predator. And I'm just like, yeah, that's tight. Dude, <laughs> so, yeah. so th- that, that was interesting. So like, but that's wh- a fr- frequency wh- physiology thing to me. But go yeah. Ahead. yeah. So like, uh, where I went on the North side, uh, or North, uh, North shore, on uh, at Hawaii or whatever, we like went out a few miles or whatever. And then they heard the, the diesel engine of the boat and then they all start coming in. And so like, <laughs> um, I was in the first group to go in, so the cage is like pressed up against the boat, so we all get in or whatever. There's like I don't know, eight of us or something. 
but then the line and they have like buoys at the top of the cage and then we're like cast off the boat so it's more stable when you're not like fucking riding the chop or whatever but like you could tell instantly because everyone's heart rate is like fucking out oh, of control yeah. and so all of them are fucking just swimming around and shit and i'm like oh my god it was so amazing and they weren't great whites no, it was like because they have great whites out there. Lemon, thought, lemon thought sharks and black tips, I think, or something okay. like that. Okay, I've seen with some black tip sharks. There's like smaller ones. But yeah. Anyways, I've done that, and then like like nurse sharks. There was potential to see like hammerhead. I wasn't in a cage for that yeah. one, yeah. so I was like ready hammerhead to be cool. Fucking see some shit, but I didn't get to see them. Though. Dude, yeah, so. I went I went scuba diving with my family, uh, like when I was 12, <laughs> and somehow I was positioned to be the first one off the boat. So the guys like, yeah, jump in, follow the chain down, wait for everybody. I'm just like, oh god, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. sure, yeah. that's like me telling Andy to do yeah. that. Yeah. See you there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. super yeah. scared, just like pressurizing and stuff. But we actually saw a nurse shark under there, and he kind of like overreacted a little bit but anyways i thought that was tight it's fucking wild all right yeah. so we gotta go it's one more question yeah. oh, sorry cool. no what do you want to uh, do all right Are there, you, th- you, there was multiple things that just popped on my mind uh you with the sharks i want to go in to the ocean and like see like the huge fucking whales oh yeah i want to swim with a whale like a Dude, w- gigantic like whale like, like i can Orca. just envision myself like being in the water just <laughs> looking up there's just massive fucking whale yeah i yeah, think yeah, that'd be crazy they, they do sharks. some of that off of, like the east coast of africa for sure one of my buddies yeah. actually guided some of those things too but like yeah they're massive Dude, that'd and be you like swim insane. alongside of them yeah. that'd be so insane cool. yeah uh that i want to bench 405 so that's Fuck on my yeah. bucket list Shout also out. Um, so creatively, I would think I want to make a movie, like help produce a movie cool. and also produce like a music album. I think that would be like That's very cool. cool. Yeah. And then also I want to, uh, you know, maybe, uh, visit, but also potentially buy Susak Island. Yeah. So there's an, yeah. I- there's an Island like on the outskirts of like Croatia that's literally Susak Island. Like back in like the 1800s, there was like 400 people that lived on there. I think you have to do that, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm hundred percent going. And they were all Susaks? Yeah, they. It was like the family. Like I don't know. I, uh, I don't know how it worked, but basically, is it your family. Dude, I, I yeah, I think so because yeah, yeah, yeah. my my grandpa's grandpa came from Italy, and I think his like family was like Croatian, Italy, like all mixed over, and they kind of spread out. But there is a Susak Island. That's tight. Yeah, um, so I'm trying to go there. Fuck yeah! You have to get to it by sailing. So of yeah. course, yeah, <laughs> sick. Uh, last question should be maybe a quick question, but. Um, number 45, who is your mentor and what have you learned from them? Uh, my original mentor would be my grandfather. And I think like what was awesome about him is it was like really just like man shit, you know, cause my dad really wasn't around much after I was 11. So it was like how to like, keep your word, do what you say you're going to do. Like make sure you're on time, make sure that you, um, are reliable. Uh, I don't know. It's like real basic ass shit but i think it was more about like just how to operate so then you can build relationships with people and i think the other stuff is that i never really saw him raise his voice but he always had a presence Mm. he did maybe once or twice to me and remember what i mean he's like already retired in his 60s when he's dealing with me when i'm like in high school too you know what i mean so it's like and i think the consistency component i got it from him because like no matter how long he worked, what he did, he came home, he still would lift weights with me. No matter what was going on, he was still like rely like it was just one of those things. He was just a solid ass dude that everyone respected. And then there was like great stories from his friends that would tell me like when he's not around, like, you know, we got in our last bar fight when we were like fifty seven. Like, you know, because when guys broke those rules, yeah. he's like that he, old, he held him accountable. He held him accountable. Like he told me I don't arm wrestle in the bar. This fucking dude wouldn't leave me alone because I asked him about it one time because his buddy's like, you know, your grandpa knocked this fucking like 30-year-old dude out when he was like 55. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, he wouldn't fucking leave him alone. But he was just like, he had like these certain principles that he followed. One of them was that. And this guy wanted to make him look bad. And he knew he was going to beat him, so he fucking beat him in arm wrestling. The guy tried to fucking raise up, and one of his <laughs> amazing quotes were, the firstest with the mostest. That's who wins the fight. Dude went like this. He fucking rocked him. He sat on the, he said he laid on his couch for fucking two days after he woke up. Like he just, it was just so old timer because I remember like to really have your dad be like a world war two vet basically is what I had that that greatest generation was just different Yeah. because he signed up for the war when he was 17. Like their sense of like things that they in, in 
growing up on the other side of the Great Depression, like literally hunting rabbits so you can bring food home for your family. Like it just was different, man. It's like, so I think that perspective of them, of him being the one that's teaching me those items was just so important. It was really cool. Hell yeah. Um, I'll give two answers because I think one of them is going to be obvious for us with Corey being here. So, I mean, Corey's been like second father figure just across the board. So, <laughs> yeah, Danny. teary, teary. <laughs> <That's good>. um, <laughs> no, just because like, I mean, you have like your immediate family, your extended family, whatever. But like, I think we've voiced it multiple times on the podcast and, and, and off the podcast. But with you can't really talk about absolutely everything that you're into and like they'll get it instantly when you come in these walls everybody pretty much gets what you're wanting to put down. So you can really throw out any scenario and it's not really crazy. Or if you have something, something going on at home, you could bring that to the table and actually get real fucking advice mm. um, from somebody. So I find that extremely valuable. And then now being like, and I already said it already, but being a dad, like getting some fucking real dad shit and seeing like AG come in here and <laughs> seeing him go back and forth with him and how he handles shit. Um, even like with, you know, with Andon and, and, Maddie too. Like, yeah. it's just, I don't know. It's really, really interesting, but it's also really cool. So fast forward, it happens quick, boy. Yeah, <laughs> she's already <laughs> past one. But, yeah. Let's go. Um, so that's the first one. And then I guess like, a, you know, an unofficial mentor um, that I don't know personally would be Ryan holiday. So let's go. I read everything and or anything and everything from Ryan, from his books to the audio books, to the podcast, to his newsletters, his long form shit. So, um, I think him being a dad of two, you know, having a wife and he writes in an easy to understand way. He doesn't get like too in the weeds with like the philosophy, st philosophy stuff, because like, you can easily do that yeah. in that world. So, um, I actually get like actionable takeaways and the, to make this shorter, um, when I separated from the last <laughs> female I was with and I was married to and everything. All his shit, I feel like, was my backstop. So, like, mm. that's what kept me above water because <laughs> I, that was the first time in my life I could see, like, the, the fork in the road. I'm like, all right, you can either go this way or this way. It was, like, black, so black or white. And so that's why I'm fucking, you know, I just love stoicism. And uh, that's why I read that shit every day. Hell, so. yeah. It was good. Of uh, uh, I got two, too. Uh, one's got to be my brother. I mean, he was, like, the huge uh, influence of, like, whenever I was in high school, like, he was preaching to me, like, why I need to get out and, like, explore, like, Columbus, like, get out of my hometown and, like, go experience that. So, definitely him. And then, two, he's got to be, like, my high school football coach, uh, Coach Johnson. I mean, dude, he is, like, the first person who, like, actually, you know, showed us and, like, basically made us, you know, be a leader, show us how to, like, represent ourselves, like, why that was important, how to stick up for other people, but also, like, how to stick up for yourself. Like, some of the stuff, because he was, like, very open with, like, stuff that he was dealing with, like, school and trying to get for the team. And he was just always trying to help us, and he was always getting backlash for it. But seeing how he responded and, like, his messaging about not being complacent, being, like, disciplined, going the extra mile type shit like that, that was a huge one. We should have that dude on the podcast. We should. He listens to the podcast. He fucking loves banging arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Turkey explosion. Yeah, I mean, real. if he had that kind of impact, and my high school strength coach had a similar impact, right, with intensity and just – Mindset, like I, I think it'd be really cool. For yeah, it was cool. To have them on. But by the way, are you gonna do share it at some point? Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of an interesting. Really that's cool. Central. He just uh, retired finally. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah. Then uh, there, I don't know how many Pickering's people. There, we're doing a retirement party. I think uh, third week of April. Oh, are I'll, you? Yeah, I'll get you all the all info. Right. My brother made a, a coin for him. I, and oh, like that's some sweet. other shit too. But like he made like a customized like coin and stuff. Yeah, he he he's a really cool. He he uh, i'd say he falls in my mentor category category a million percent just he got me on the right path in high school like he like he saw my potential and he literally like showed up in my driveway unannounced and like called me he goes brian are you home my fucking car's home yeah and uh so he uh he pulls me outside and says you're running with the wrong fucking people uh he goes like you need to stop fucking smoking dope you need to stop doing all these stuff or at least being around people that do um, because it goes, this is what you can do. Like you can go this way. Or you can go this way. Wow. He goes, we all want you to go this way and you can. And he, and then, but then he held me accountable to that the whole time. So it was that really belief cool. from somebody you respect is important too. Yeah. And he's intimidating. Dude. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. But, the, the fucking staff was hilarious. Like during like the weight room sessions, they just like all be in there just benching. Like yeah. that just, <laughs> that, that's all they'd be doing. Only thing they did. Only upper body. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he's an incredible human. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, then we, yeah, we got we got around right. Uh, uh, Trayvon. Um, I would say like Corey. Um, just you know, like how to build confidence and like everything, just the importance of that in life. So. Hell yeah. And then um, mine would probably be my grandpa as well. He uh, he just I I saw it firsthand where like he I mean he spent his life working in a lumber yard had like a total of eight fingers with all the tips cut off <laughs> like i've never met somebody with tougher hands kind of concept so that always like just resonated with me that he like earned all those things like earned the eight fingers earned the tough hands but he saved up his money him and my grandma to buy into their passion they bought a bowling alley later in life that's sick really <laughs> that's cool awesome. and then he just had like really simple ways of uh i guess provoking action where it'd just be like we'd be doing whatever and he just get off your ass and do some good and they're just like, you guys, you want to solve your problems? Get off your ass. And it's just like so blunt where it's just like now I can even like if I'm sitting there bullshitting, I can hear him say, like, get off your ass, do something good. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot to be said for like just direct action. Yeah. <laughs> like Just and, do it. Well, I just uh, I, I mean, he he died when I was maybe a freshman in high school. But one of the coolest things was that um, my mom and my grandma, they always butted heads with his dad cause he's kind of a dick and he lived to be like 105 Jeez. and we, dude, yeah, we just go, in spite. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And so they always took care of him. My mom, my grandma, like all those kind of things. And, uh, but, and so I was driving with my grandpa one time to like an Indians game for an hour. And, uh, I was like, I was like, uh, just being an ignorant little kid, like, like, why do you, uh, why do you take care of a uh, great grandpa so much kind of deal? And those kind of things he goes because he he had been a really dick recently and he goes he goes that man bought me my first car and he goes and i'll forever be in his debt because that was very rare at the time and that's one of the times that i felt the best in my life is when i had this car and he goes and my grandpa's like like since he was like 12 was like putting insulation in roofs in the summertime all this crazy stuff so i always respected that that he there's that one action that his dad gave him when he was 16 years old like he was still carrying probably 50 years later to support wow. this man and give back. So I thought that was really cool, but that is really cool. Anyways, boys, thank you for hopping on. Wait, wait, we got to do one else. more. We got to do one more. The people, uh, I, oh, you someone called in. Yeah. The people are listening right now. They, yeah. They want 69. They want so <laughs> please, for the please, we'll, we'll, we'll make it quick, but we got to yeah, We yeah. can't leave the show without the one sixty nine. Um, whoa. What, what, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa. 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 Yeah. Clip whoa. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Cole wants Whoopsie. to post that. Yeah. What is something that most people learn only after it's too late? Oh, wow. Oh, what is something most people learn only after it's too late? Uh, I think this is the thing that pops in my head first. I think the appreciation of a good significant other. Mm. I think that I've heard multiple times in, during my life when somebody's lost somebody that they thought, not even lost somebody from a standpoint of like they passed away, but they just lost the relationship because they thought the grass was greener somewhere else, right? And I think that, you know, there is people change. I mean, I've been married to Rach for 20 years. Like people do change, but you got to still remember why you love the person in the first place, right? Things change, your situations change. But I think people, you know, like marriage and relationships are things you have to work on. And I think that people give up a lot. Now, if there's some catastrophic thing, I get it. Like people make crazy mistakes that you can never come back from, in my opinion. But I think that I've heard a lot of people on the other side of, man, what the fuck was I thinking? Or why did I, you know, not go over and above? So I think that's that's the thing that pops to mind. Yeah, that's a, just a little nuance there. So because uh, my girlfriend, Laura, kind of had the same thing. And so she actually, it wasn't like a requirement. And I actually drug my feet reading it. But she said she was like, I'd like you to read this book, Love Between Equals. Um just to so you can understand me better and we can understand this relationship better which is really cool and like the whole like not to over summarize the book because there's so many layers yeah. to like the personal relationship and connection i recommend everybody reads it okay. i think it should be required reading for like a significant other in that realm but it's like one you need to be good with yourself but you also need to understand that like this is going to be a continually evolving thing and, and it gives you really cool tactics on how to keep learning your significant other and keep understanding like the space between you and how to like manage it is really mm, cool. Yeah. That's um, real cool. But yeah, a little nuance. Um, my kind of echoes sort of what yours is, but I'm just thinking about like, uh, like basically as my like little girl or maybe future children grow up is like not being there like forever. Cause like right now my biggest fear is missing something. Like even if I'm gone for like 
like two days or something. Like I'm like, I got to fucking see everything I possibly can. You know what I mean? I don't know. It, it, it might be ridiculous to, I mean, sounding, you know, if you're listening to this, but when you actually get to see those little like incremental things that she does on a day to day basis, it's like the coolest thing in the world. So like, that's like my favorite thing to say right now. It's like, what's cooler than making a tiny you of, like a tiny little human. Yeah. So that, that's probably, that's short. Answer I think that that, and, and maybe there's some younger dads that are like that, but an older dad and you're not old, but I was a little bit younger. Like I didn't appreciate that stuff as much early. Cause I was still in the, it's like, difficult. Tr- yeah. yeah, it's difficult. So like his perspective on that has been, and my, my friend Todd's the same way mm-hmm. in like, he, he became a dad a little bit older too. And I, I see that with both you guys, like if similar personalities too, but it's like, you know, when you're showing somebody like 20 pictures of your kid, you can tell, like I was not that way. Not that it's a bad thing, but it's like, when I, Danny does that to me, I'm like appreciate his appreciation for those incremental things, which is uncommon, I think. No, I like, so, that. I like that cool. a lot. Cole, you need a question where you're at or are you good? No, I'm good. Uh, I would say is you got to enjoy where you're at in the moment. Um, even if you think you're enjoying it, even like try to take it in more and like realize where you're at. But also along with that is you got to capture more. Like, mm. like take, take more pictures, take more photos because – the one of the things I wish is I wish I had fucking videos of like my high school weight room sessions. Mm. I really think about that a lot. I really wish I I'd had. I'd like them. to watch some of them. Yeah. Yeah, but now like you know, I'd and like I to see a highlight reel. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, with the job with the photos, that's one thing. Like whenever I have kids or whatever family events, is I'm gonna be documenting everything because like I think that's like super important. I, I think a video journal, you know, kind of concept. Yep. Yeah. What's the question? Uh, <laughs> um, what is something that most people learn only after it's too late? Um, kind of like echo of Corey is just like, yeah, like the appreciation of like, you know, like specific people, I would say like, n- you know, like you don't realize how important some people are, like how much they've impacted your life usually until they're too late just because people take it for granted. I, like that. I think the other thing is I'll, I'll piggyback off a similar vibe is not taking risks. I, I, I think that it scared me when I heard that early of like older people being like, why they look back and think, why didn't I try harder? Why didn't I take a risk? Why didn't I Mm -hmm. go the extra to really go do what I wanted to do? And I think, and I said this on a podcast or a daily fire, like I think my family was, it had been so many years. They were so fed up with what was happening that they almost like got me there faster because I just kept watching it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not continuing this. Like it's not even in my personality to keep letting this roll. And I think that part of it was me being scared that I was going to repeat it. And then be an old man and say, what the fuck was I doing? Why did I not? So my whole thing is when I take big risks, especially some of the ones that have worked out good for me, is rolling the dice. I just don't want to, like. What if? Yeah, I can't be a what if guy. It's, it's, it, it, it's impossible for me. Like, I just don't think I'm wired that way. I never wanted to be wired that way. And I can literally, I think that's why I have a calm to me now is because. I tried to be a half a billion dollars once. Yeah. You can't tell me I did because I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know at the depth of it, I was I, I would have been living in a box. Like I, li- I risked literally everything, all of it. And so it's like I never have to think, what if? I know exactly what happened. That's why I was at Arnold's on Christmas. You know what I mean? So it's like I think that I was scared into that, though, from years of it not happening. Yeah. But I think a lot of people have that regret. Yeah, I was going to echo the same thing, which is, again, like, because people just kind of follow the system. And yeah. so I was going to say, like, you need to break the mold, in, in essence, to get your freedom. Because, like, uh, if not, you're just going to play the next rung on the ladder game your entire life. But I, I, I do, I, I just appreciate that where it's like, because m- the philosophy that I like to view is, like, why would you not do what you love in life and find out how to make money instead of, like make money and then try and find the, the minuscule free time, particularly when now you had a family and all these things, like why would we not approach harder. the structure of that? And then kind of my little nuance here for this question was just like, cause I, I, I don't think people learn it too late. I think they just, um, they should learn it earlier. Maybe I don't know if that mm-hmm. means the same thing, but, uh, that nobody goes to bed thinking about you is kind mm-hmm. of my bit where it's just yeah. like, and I, and I preach this to high school kids now in that essence where it's like nobody's going to bed thinking about your pimples. Like they're thinking about their own problems. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the, the freedom that comes with that and like the freedom to create and take risks despite failing publicly or whatnot, like I think people put way too much weight on that. And if, yeah. you, and if you can 
just understand that like like same as you're going to bed thinking about your problems people are doing that just like so go do whatever the fuck you want yeah and i think it's simple enough it's uh not being so caught up in that your world is like everyone else's lens too because it's just not yeah it's the same thing we demystified on the pod yeah. before this yeah it's demystify twice got yeah, yeah. I, I can't feel like i got very dust i can't wait till you use that in a correct way. oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna use oh yeah i'll use it like wrong context yeah. a million times probably no. but i'm definitely using that in my can vocab. you use it in a sentence please yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna demystify this pre-workout yeah. Real yeah. Quick. yeah yeah shout out pre-extreme yeah um but boys thank you for hopping on the the fire way um if you are listening tune into the round table podcast it'll be linked in the notes below um i think i can get everybody going around Corey G at Corey G <laughs> G Fitness, Small Arms Danny, Cole Suzak. Is that your yep. that's a tag yep. too? And then Trey Speed still? No. Trayvon Deer. Trayvon Deer. I know I gotta change Dier. that in the intro, but I, I can't it yeah, it's not as he's smooth Trace, off the yeah, tongue. I gotta, I gotta work just, on that. Just speed. So. Just, <laughs> but thank you everybody for tuning in. Have a great day.